Welcome everyone to another CTC webinar. My name is Sean Zerbis, Technical Evangelist at CTC, and today we're going to be talking about a comprehensive introduction to the Family Tools add-in inside of Revit 28, uh, 2017 through 2020, actually. So first, let's kind of quickly cover what it is we're going to talk about. You see, there's a lot of stuff in the family creation process that is just a bit on the tedious side. We get to do a lot of backup deletion. We get to do a lot of uh, kind of family upgrading and some steps there. And while this tool doesn't do all of the things for us, it helps us in some very key areas. And for a free tool, this really has a couple of very good spots where it can save us a bit of time and a bit of frustration. These aren't things we do on a daily basis, probably, but they're things that we do enough that it's really nice when we have a tool to help save us a bit of time. So today we're gonna to go over a couple of things. How you can access the family tools on the BIM Manager Suite, kind of where you'll find it. We'll take a look at the interface of this tool. We are gonna do a little bit of general maintenance using the tool. And then if you don't already have the suite and you want it, you can go ahead and download this today. And since this is a free tool, it will work forever. I'm gonna show you how you can get your hands on the BIM Manager Suite. So with that, since I'm not big on death by PowerPoint, let's jump live into Revit. And as always, when we're doing one of our presentations, these are of course recorded and we try to answer questions live. So if you've got questions about this tool while I'm talking about it, I encourage you to just throw them in the questions window and I will try to answer them in line or certainly I will answer them at the end as well if I don't get to them throughout the uh, discussion today. So we're in Revit. I happen to be in Revit 2018. As I mentioned earlier, this tool works Revit 2017 through Revit 2020. So all the latest four versions of Revit. Regardless of where you are, once you have these tools install, installed, you should get a CTC software tab inside Revit itself. And the CTC software tab on the BIM manager suite, these tools in blue right here, one of them, the very first one actually, is family tools. You might notice this is a light colored icon where most of the BIM Manager Suite has darker blue colored icons. And that's, that indicates that this is a free tool. That's kind of a theme on all of our suites. The light colored icons are free. So I have my information here set up currently to show me the free tools always. There is an option in Suite Settings to have all free tools grouped under a single icon. You can then expand it out. I like seeing all the tools. So you, know, you can see I have family tools right here on my ribbon. This is a small collection of utilities that just helps us with some of that family creation and family management process. In this tool, when I click on it to open this up, there's five major tabs. We've got the ability to delete backup files. We have some tools to help us with some type catalog work, depending on how your workflow goes. I'll show you some examples or an example of how you can use this. Uh, we can compare two different shared parameter files to each other and get a report off of that. We can merge two shared parameter files together, just kind of a brute force merging. And there's also a family file version detector here. I use this a lot when I'm trying to go through and figure out what kind of work maybe I have to do to a directory uh, of content. So first off, deleting backup files. This is the very first tab because this is something many of us do on a fairly regular basis. We need to go in and uh, take our backup files and just clean them up after we've worked on them. In Revit, if you save something, a, a single user file, family files especially, in a lot of cases, or at least by default, you get three backups over time, the three .00 whatever files. And uh, unfortunately in Windows, when you sort by name, those .00 files show up before the RFA does. And so if a user's not paying attention, they might accidentally load backups, not really knowing what they're doing because they're not really paying attention necessarily. So what I like to do is have this browsed to my primary family directory, the, 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 the top of that drive or the, the top folder that holds most of my families. This is just looking at a smaller folder for sake of time. I can very quickly refresh a list and it'll just pull in any of those .00 families and project files. So if you have a warehouse project file that holds a lot of your system families or your typical details, that might be a part of your standards directory. And if that's a single user file, it too will get the .00 suffixes uh, for the backup files. 
This here will let me very quickly just refresh this list. It'll automatically scan through all subfolders in whatever this folder is. In my case, a bunch of categorical folders. You can see I've got model export as my root, and then I've got model doors, and then some families inside of there. I was doing some work on these families the other day. In my case, I wanna just delete these backup files. By default, they'll all be selected already. I can simply delete them. It's gonna permanently delete the backup files. This is like doing a shift delete in Windows. All I have to do is hit yes, and it cleared up about four meg of space. I love this little bit here. It tells me how much space I'm saving. I've seen people save easily across their family libraries, or most of them. Uh, it receives quite a bit of, of space here. All right, uh, so that's cleared up a bunch of space. There's nothing left, so we're good there. Um, there is a question that rolled in about this when I was talking about deleting backups for single user files. There was a question that somebody asked about, do we have a tool that deletes project backup files? Well, if you're talking about work sharing backups, no, we don't touch those. Uh, that Revit kind of does its own system for handling the history of backup files there. If you were to open and resave a pro open a project detached and resave on top of itself, then that'll do that. It'll it'll help you there. Um, but this is primarily with family tools designed more about managing your family library. And with that, we do consider system families hosted within a project a part of your family library. So if you're dealing with um, single user access, not non work sharing enabled projects. Uh, then you uh, you will see those in this list. Single user backups will, sh or, uh, uh, project RVTs will show up here if it's a single user file. Okay, uh, that's the delete backups. And again, it remembers your paths here from session to session. So if you have this once and you use this tool, when I close out family tools and I open it back up again, cool thing, because I'm commonly as a BIM manager going to the same directories over and over again, it remembers that. So it can save me a bit of time the next time I open up this tool. The next one in line is a type catalog tools little area here. This does one thing, but one really powerful thing if you work with your type catalogs in this fashion. I'm gonna pull a directory across here for you. This is sort of a sample directory and I've made myself a Microsoft Excel workbook that has a couple of doors tabs in it. When I open this up, uh, on my other monitor apparently, and I bring this across for you so you can see it, uh, you'll notice that I have two tabs here, door single panel, door double flush panel. These two tabs have basically the layout of a type catalog. A type catalog are these, um, pull this out to the side here, little text files that sit out here next to the actual Revit families. It has a list of types and some parameters. And when you load the family in Revit, this type catalog will uh, pop up a little window letting the users selectively load specific types. Now, when I'm dealing with type catalogs, I love the ability here to put a formula as a part of my type name, this first column being a type name. So I wrote a little formula that drives that. So if I was to make a new row inside of here and I put in a, a new width or a new height or something like that, this name automatically fills itself out. Usually my type names are in some way relative to some of the properties over here. So I can derive that type name. Now I can't do that in a text file, of course, right? A text file is just a flat text file. So if I'm doing this in Excel, I need to save this file out in a way that Revit can understand as a text document out here that sits next to my family. Revit doesn't read the CSV, it reads the text file. From Excel, when I save this out, I can quickly do a file save as from this first tab, and I'm going to save this as a CSV. I like using this CSV right here, comma delimited. This is what Excel wants, or what, what uh, Revit wants anyway. So when I pick door single panel CSV right here, this, that was a tab I believe that I was on, when I do this and overwrite that file, it's gonna replace the CSV, not the text, the CSV file here, and it flattens it out. It's now effectively a text file, it's comma delimited, but I have to rename that file to .txt for Revit to get it. Well, if I've got a bunch of tabs in here, I'm gonna save this one out as well. File, save as, knows my directory, I'm just gonna pick this, saving it as a CSV as door panel flush, uh, door double flush panel CSV, replace that. So I've saved out two text, or two text-based CSV files. They need to be renamed. In fact, I have to delete this file 
and then uh, change the name of this one to, to TXT. And I have to do that for all of those that I save out. If you're doing a lot of type catalog editing, that can get real frustrating real quick, having to do this over and over again. I love managing it from here. I hate manually clicking on something and then clicking to highlight and then changing to TXT and then forgetting that I had to delete that, um, the other file and getting that duplicate name thing. So let's see what the tool does. Family tools here, when I open up this tool, will let me go to type catalog tools. I'm going to refresh my list here from this doors folder. And you can see I've got two CSVs in there. Well, I'm gonna copy those CSVs to text files. And it did it. It doesn't look like it did a whole lot of magic things, but you know what it did here? If I pull this back forward, this CSV saved out at 12.09 central time, which was just a couple of minutes ago, has now become this text file down here. Same thing here. This 12.10 was saved out, and it's now the text file down here. So the next time I load this door, it's going to use this text file. It's already worked out. I was able to edit it from Excel very easily, saved it out as a CSV, and now that CSV with the intelligent type names uh, now just became a TXT. Simple little thing, saved me some time. I love saving time, that's what I'm all about. So type catalog tools, great little tool there. This compare shared parameters right here, again, remembers my paths from last time. So if I have a main company file and some secondary file over here, I can simply tell this to compare this text file, this shared parameter file here, and this you know, shared parameter file over here. Maybe somebody went rogue in my company and made a secondary shared parameter file. Maybe they copied mine and did a save as, and I wanna know what the differences are between the two. This thing will tell me exactly the differences. It tells me from the first file what unique groups are here. It tells me from the second file what unique groups or duplicate groups are there. Um, tells me here what unique parameters exist in each of the two, and it tells me then which ones are common between them as well. This can also generate me a text report that I can bring into Excel or some other tool and kind of review there. When I hit compare, it scans both of the two files and it gives me this nice report here that I could copy out to a text file. You see, I can copy this to clipboard and paste it into notepad, which gives me all that information, but it also shows it to me right here. I've got 27 unique groups uh, in the original file. I've got six unique groups here. There's no unique parameters in this right side, oddly enough. There's a number of them over here. Um, there's some common parameters between them, some common groups, which is good. There's no conflicts. This is good to know. There's no parameters that have the same name with a different GUID or a different data type or things like that. Uh, but I can very quickly just compare these two. This doesn't let me fix anything. This just gives me information. But that's good for me as a BIM manager to know because now I might have an idea of some of the steps I have to take. Now, by the way, if you do purchase the BIM manager suite, you get a full license. I would probably just go directly to the shared parameter manager, which does this more elegantly and it lets you fix it. But that's a paid tool, right? If you need a free solution, this will give you enough information to move forward uh, to understand what you have to do to kind of fix those files. Now also there's sort of a brute force merger here where I can take two files, a, a copy from file, maybe that second one that I had, and a copy to, maybe my main company file, and I can brute force just push all the, do, uh, the, the, the unique parameters from one into the other and uh, have it basically give me one shared parameter file back. If you want more control than that, and as a BIM manager, I think you would, once again, if you buy the BIM manager suite, shared parameter manager will help you there, but this is a free tool that lets you just have a sort of a brute force quick solution to merge two shared parameter files together. Okay, last tool, last sub tool here in the family tools is the family file version detector. The other day I was working with a client and they actually had a crashing project. We couldn't figure out quite what the issue was and we scanned a directory of all the families that had been loaded in. And by using this tool, if I just refresh this list and I tell it to detect versions, it's gonna run through and tell me from this root directory what Revit version these files were last saved in. In this case, this entire directory is 2015. It also tells me the Revit build date from this. So it tells me not just the Revit version, but the sub build that's going on here for each of these families. And this is not the saved date, this is the Revit build date. This was meaningful for us because we discovered a number of families that hadn't been opened and edited since Revit, uh, I believe it was Revit 8.1, yeah. 
and, and it was causing some corruption in their project because they were direct upgrading when they were loading it into their project. That was just causing a few problems, which uh, was causing their project to crash, which was undesirable. So we used some of our other BIM manager suite tools in the paid portion of the suite, like Family Processor, to understand which families we had to go through and do some repairs on. And then we were able to load them back in using some of our other free tools in the batch suite, and uh, that, that saved them a bunch of crashing over time. So this here helped us discover that problem, though, because we knew exactly the Revit versions it was coming from. That was just one thing we were checking, but a quick, easy way to understand this. All right, that is all about the family tools, the five different sub tabs in this free tool here, the free add in family tools that you can use to just save you some time uh, with your Revit family creation workflows. Now, if you don't have the BIM manager suite yet, you may very well want to get your hands on it. So, how do you get your hands on it? Well, if you go to ctcsoftware.com, okay? ctcsoftware.com right here will bring you to our website and you can go to products and from products you can go to the BIM Manager Suite 2020. Earlier on I said that this works with Revit 2017 through 2020 so perfect you can get all of those but you can try BIM Manager Suite free for 14 days. This will give you access to all the paid tools for 14 days but the free tools in this case family tools will just continue to work forever even after that 14 days. So certainly feel free to try it. And if you want to know more about how to get your hands on buying it, there's other information here for that as well. But uh, if you want to see more videos about things like this, again, there's the Family Tools demo. This webinar will, was recorded and we'll probably replace that one in the near future. But uh, certainly check out the BIM Manager Suite and see if it might be meaningful for you. I want to thank you all for the time that you've given us today. We do look forward to seeing you in future webinars here at CTC. Yeah.